Hey guys, this is Mike, and uh, this is going to be the last video of the tutorial. Uh, I didn't manage to finish the game. I realized that it's going to take a lot longer than I thought, and I've been busy these past few weeks, so I haven't had too much time to work on it. But I did uh, try uh, to push out at least one level, and uh, I don't want to leave you guys hanging or anything, so I just created this quickly and um, I'm gonna post the link of the to the project in the description so everything is pretty much exactly the same the engine is the exact same one as the one that I used in the dragon game um, with three major changes these three classes jukebox first of all the audio uh, jukebox is a global class, which means that music can be loaded and played from anywhere. Before, you couldn't do that. Every game state had its own piece of music, and no other game state could uh, could access it. So, I made this global so that you know any anyone can uh, mess around with that. Also, this is global as well. Content. Uh, this loads up every spreadsheet that I need one time. The problem before was that, uh, let's say I had a thousand enemies on the screen, a thousand of the same enemy, that means I would load up, <laughs> I would have to read in a thousand sprite sheets of the exact same enemy, and that would be a waste of memory, and that would increase loading time. So I have this class to just load up all the sprite sheets that I need, one time when the game starts and that's it and I can just go ahead and grab them from here the other one is keys um, there was a problem with the event dispatch thread uh, concurrency issues basically the key listeners are run on a separate thread so I didn't want to have to deal with any concurrency issues like that so what I did was um, all I did was set for the key events to... I have these two boolean arrays, key state and previous key state, and these are going to tell me whether or not keys are pressed, and I handle them during the update, which is run on the, the thread that I want. So those are the three biggest changes. Other than that, everything is pretty much the same. I'm going to go ahead and play it a little bit just so you can see what it looks like. <laughs> I've been working on this way longer than I thought. Alright. So there was actually quite a bit of uh, planning that I realized. There was a lot of aspects to making a platformer. One of the biggest ones was uh, deciding whether or not a character can actually shoot something. And, you know, it provides for a completely different gameplay if your character cannot shoot anything, I think. So, like, with the dragon game, you can just fire stuff and, you know, have an easy time just popping people from a distance. But this guy can't shoot anything, so he has to get up close and actually attack them. Makes it a little bit more challenging, I think. Here's the boss dude. This guy is actually pretty difficult. I have a hard time beating him. And I only have three health. Great, I'm probably gonna die. Oh snap. And I'm lagging. The recording is lagging. Oh snap, that is some lag. Oh damn. I'm dead, I'm dead. I only have one health. All done. Oh no, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. I'm dead. 
<laughs> Damn it. Okay. I got this. I got this. Oh no, I should have done that. Oh my god, terrible. Uh oh. Oh my god, I can't beat him. I can't beat him. Congratulations screen. So that's pretty much it for this video. So thanks for watching and yeah